Real-World Computer Programming for Kids, Step 33, Code Comparison, and a Glimpse into What May Be Your Future, Source Control Tools. Hello all, and welcome back. In this step, we will consider code comparison in general, and a specific code comparison tool. First, though, you may wonder, what is code comparison? Why is code comparison useful, and how is it used? Let's tackle these questions one at a time. What is code comparison? Code comparison is when you compare code. Okay, on to the next question. Just kidding. What it's really about is comparing a particular block of code with a different version of that same block of code. In other words, it's like traveling in time back to a former version of the method or the file. So what you're doing is comparing code written at one time with code written at another time. It can show you how much the code has changed in the meantime, but there is more to it, which leads to the next question. Why is code comparison useful? As described so far, it sounds like code comparison is just a way of measuring how much code has changed or to geek out over which changes have been made. But again, there's more to it than that. Mainly, code comparison tools are used to see what code changed when a bug was introduced. Let's say, for example, not that this would ever really happen, that a certain portion of the code was working fine, and then an additional feature was added, but that new code caused a different bug or two or a few to arise. Or possibly the code won't just work wonkily, but won't even compile at all after the changes were made. It may be that you were so busy adding code here and changing code there that you don't know where the bug was introduced. The changes you made are scattered all over the place. By using a code comparison tool, it will show you exactly what changed and where. How is it used? How is code comparison used? Code comparison tools. The first thing you need to do in order to be able to use a code comparison tool in the first place is to save the current version of your code from time to time. At the minimum, you should save your code once each day that you work on it. How often you save your code depends on how much work you are doing, how much you are changing it, though. There are times when I've saved a new version of my code every half hour or so. So now for the crux of the biscuit or the cookie. When you want or need to compare one version of your code with another version, you can do it by hand, actually by eye, but that is overly tedious, difficult to do right, and fraught with peril for that reason. This may seem overstated, but you may get so irritated trying to do it that way that you blow a gasket or a fuse or something and have something like this happen. And then it shows a picture of a volcanic eruption. You are now doubtless saying to yourself, there must be a better way. There is. Rather than endanger yourself and your surroundings that tedious way, you can use a code comparison tool to automate the process or semi-automate it. There are many, but one of my goals on this journey that we're taking is to point you to free tools to work with, such as Visual Studio. In this case, I recommend that you try the free online tool at dipchecker.com. I will now demonstrate that with two versions of the code from our app. I will compare the current version of the code from form1.cs with a version from a week ago, or actually just six days ago. Plenty has changed in that time. When we go to the web address mentioned, we see this, and it shows a screenshot of what you see at that site. You see there is an original text section on the left and a new text section on the right. It doesn't say original code and new code because you can use this tool with any text file or files. It could be a letter to your grandmother thanking her for baking you that nice apple pie or those ginger snaps or molasses cookies or tasty cinnamon rolls. Give her my address if that is the case. Taste testing those types of health food is a hobby of mine. I copy and paste the code from last week into the original pane and the most recent code in the new pane. 
and I've shown that in a screenshot. Select the Find Difference button below the two text panes. The two versions will now look like this. And it shows a screenshot of how they now look. Notice that in the six days between these two versions of the code, Diff Checker says there have been 87 removals and 225 additions. You can see that in the upper left corner. It highlights the line that has changed with a different color and bolds the areas where the differences are. For example, notice line 16 where it has noted that string original question n of n has been commented out in the newer version of the code. Also notice in line 39 in the old original code and line 42 in the new code, the change in calling the separate method old to directly calling the code new that the separate method was calling in place or in line, cutting out the middleman. And a screenshot is shown of that. Here's another example of something that can really stand out, another screenshot. Do you notice what it is? The new code has a call to initialize form, whereas it is absent from old the old code. If a bug arises and you trace it to this method, either by stepping through the code, looking at the exception message that is displayed, or by logging it, this can be a clue as to the culprit. Something different is causing a bug. What is it? Could it be this new code you added? Quite possibly. To test it, you can comment that line of code out, the new line, run the app again, and if the error goes away, you probably found the culprit. Now, you will want to look at it in more detail so as to determine how you can still accomplish what you want to do, but without the error, without the bug. Note, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You will deal with a lot of bugs when you're coding. Sometimes it gets very frustrating and tedious. You can get irritated and agitated. What I recommend to you is a soothing influence at times when you feel like throwing the monitor, the computer screen, not the big lizard, through the wall is to listen to Johann Pachelbel's Canon in D, or such like music, J.S. Box, Jesus, Joy of Man's Desiring, and Air on the G sprint String, and Sleepers Awake in particular. Don't think I'm a fuddy-duddy, even though I might be in some ways. I also like modern, loud music a lot, including Laura's rock version of Canon. But there's nothing like a dose of Pockable's Canon and D when you're feeling grouchy or overstressed. It's not just for weddings. The man was a genius and a beautiful soul. I didn't know him personally. His death and my birth are 252 years apart. But nobody but one with a truly beautiful soul could have composed such a sublime and majestic masterpiece. In other words, I kind of like that composition a little. And a picture of Punkable is shown. So back to the code comparison. The code changed a lot in those six days, and it's a bit overwhelming to take it all in, all the changes. Provided you save your code often, there shouldn't be too many differences between your last working copy and the new problematic one when you're working on a bug. That makes it easier to track down what is causing the bug, of course. Fewer changes. For example, let's now load the second most recent version of the code along with the newest. Hit the clear button on the page, then refresh the page to go back to a blank areas for the text to be pasted into. There are Fewer differences when comparing these two, of course, but there are some, of course, such as where we change the exception handling code by adding the exception logging, as shown here. And a screenshot of that is shown. So there you have an introduction to code comparison, what it is, why it is useful, and how to use one free tool, Diff Checker. There are more full-featured versions of code comparison tools, but they usually must be downloaded and installed, perhaps no big deal to you and usually cost money too, perhaps a bigger deal to you. And caveat emptor, which means wear an empty tie or something. Sometimes tools will advertise themselves as free, but then it turns out that they are just a free limited time trial. And after the trial period ends, such as 30 days, they will continually harass you to purchase them and make it difficult for you to completely uninstall them. So be careful. 
I'm not saying it's not worthwhile to pay a little for such tools, but make sure you do some comparison shopping. No pun intended, first. Two that I do recommend are Beyond Compare and KDIF. KDIF is free to download, not as a trial. They do accept donations. Related to code comparison tools are full-fledged full source control solutions, which can be handy even for solo or hobbyist programmers, but are necessary when working with a team of programmers, and you need to collab collaborate on projects, especially if multiple people are working on the same code at different times. We won't go into this subject much, at least not yet, but this is just to let you know that if you decided to pursue software development, computer programming as a profession, you will probably need to familiarize yourself with source control packages, such as Git, Microsoft Visual Source Safe, or something else. Using these tools properly allows you to assure that you are not overwriting someone else's code and vice versa. You check out code to work on it and then check it back in before anybody else can then check it out and make their changes or additions. You can think of it as a physical library book. While one patron has it checked out, others have to wait to get their hands on it. In the next step, we will wrap up the Windows Forms with C Sharp and Visual Studio portion of Real World Programming for Kids by answering questions readers have sent in from around the world. We will take up after that with databases. Tune in to the next episode or step to see how interesting, fun, and useful they are going to be.